Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. For those of you guys that are fiending for egg cutting, uh, we are gonna do round two of egg cutting here in just a minute. In the meantime, let's just push our problems aside. Have a good day together. Uh, it's gonna be an amazing day. We got all kinds of stuff planned for you for the next 12 or 15 minutes. So let's have a good time. We'll just go ahead and jump right into some egg cutting. Are you guys ready for another egg cutting? That's right, the second clutch. The pairing was interesting, so these babies could be pretty unique. And here's the actual female itself. This is a pastel yellow belly for sure. And then the Sahara just has kind of a more interesting pattern. Like I'd mentioned, it came out of Africa. It was called the Sahara. No one ever really worked with the jeans, so I don't even know if it's something that can be passed on or not. I guess we'll find out when we cut the clutch. Here's actually the dad right here. He's a super enchy pinstripe. Unfortunately, he's in shed. He's usually a lot more beautiful than this. And again, because he's a super enchy pin, it means all of the eggs are gonna be at least enchy. So let's just go ahead, jump back next door and cut this clutch. So again, I'm not 100% sure what that Sahara thing is gonna do, if it's gonna make anything at all. I have no idea, but let's just jump into it and see what's going on. Here is the first egg. I tell you what, I am so excited about this entire season. We're continuing to get so many more eggs. And, uh, and of course we have some beautiful babies. Again, everything here will be enchy and Right off the rip, we just have what looks like probably an Enchi pinstripe, to be honest with you. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything more into it. It's only two jeans. The fact that we have all kinds of different stuff going on, I expect more than two jeans and most of the stuff, but that's okay. First egg down, we've got lots more eggs to go. You ready? Let's go. Come on, give me something beautiful in here, people. Let's go. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Okay, interesting. <laughs> well, when I said that uh, we had the double gene animal, I guess it could get worse because we just got a single gene entry. So we had nothing there. That's okay. Four eggs to go. I guarantee you there's going to be a banger in here somewhere. All right, egg number three. Please let there be something a little bit more exciting. I was really had high hopes for this clutch. I think there's going to be some crazy stuff. And weirdly enough, guys, it looks like another just enchi. Although this one is a little bit different. It's got an interesting pattern to it. So there might be something else actually going on in this egg. I'm not 100% sure. Nevertheless, at best, it might have two genes. At worst, it might just be an enchi. So, so far, uh, second clutch of the year isn't uh, shaping up to be crazy. But hey, listen, we've only cut three eggs. We've got three eggs to go. These next three eggs could be the magic ones, right? So let's go ahead and get right into this one here. And away we go. Come on, give me something amazing. I want to just get blown away by what's inside of an egg. Oh my gosh, this is so weird, guys. This looks like a pastel enchi. There might be a yellow belly in it because again, the pastel Sahara yellow belly had that going on. So it might be a pastel enchi yellow belly possible, but still haven't hit that combo, that really beautiful combo that I was hoping for. So let's jump in this next egg. All right, come on guys. It's still exciting to hatch eggs and it's still exciting to cut eggs no matter what's inside of them. I'm still really excited about it. And let's see what we have here. Another pastel enchi. So really what I was really hoping for was that pastel, pinstripe, enchi, Sahara, yellow belly, something that's gonna be really radically different looking. So far we haven't even hit those things, so that's the way these things go. Sometimes you get great odds, sometimes you don't get great odds. We have one egg to go, and listen, all it takes is one really good egg to make the entire clutch good. So let's just, uh, let's do a little uh, prayer to the snake gods and let's jump into it. Come on, I always like ending on the best egg of the clutch. So let's hope that that happens with this one right here. Come on, baby, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Ooh, well, hmm, interesting. Not exactly, well, there's, there's no pinstripe in this one, but this is kind of what I was hoping What's gonna happen is to produce an animal that looked kind of radically different. This is definitely Enchi because it's a super Enchi. Definitely pastel, might be yellow belly, but then it looks like something different. Maybe that Sahara gene is popping through a little bit on this one. Lots of blushing, lots of interesting stuff going on in that. So uh, all in all, the last egg was the coolest egg, which is pretty cool. So uh, that is it for cutting this clutch. We have plenty more, uh, you know, like 160 more clutches to cut this year. So it's going to be a pretty awesome year, uh, and uh, that is it. So uh, I'm putting my razor blade down. As a matter of fact, you know what? wasn't happy with the results of this clutch, so I'm retiring this razor blade and getting a new one. I tell you, what a difference removing the red iguanas has made for French's and Heinz. I tell you what, and that just goes to show you that it's important to read your animals, right? The four of them were doing great together, but then when the red ones started to get too big, these guys started to get thin, their colors 
weren't as vibrant. Now, uh, just a handful of days of being alone, they're super fat, their colors are more vibrant. Look at how long Heinz's tail is right now. The very, very bottom is getting a little weird. May even fall off and regenerate down there. I'm not exactly 100% sure what that's going to turn out to look like, but you can hardly tell where his old tail ends and his new tail begins. I mean, that is pretty awesome. And it was the right decision to make to get those red iguanas out of here. Uh, whether I'm going to keep or not, we'll wait to see. I know Bruce really likes them. He's been working with them, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll make a decision on that sometimes. I know a lot of people reached out. I've got all your information. If I decide to rehome them, I'll get in touch for sure. But for now, I'm just happy that Heinz and French is is doing so well now. I always love this time of day, and that is, of course, ball python egg time of the day. This happens to be a yellow belly female, and she looks like she's wrapped around a beautiful clutch of eggs, and she was bred to this absolutely gorgeous banana fire pinstripe. Let's see how many eggs she has. Beautiful clutch, mama. You did so good. Oh, there's a couple little sluggers in there. I didn't see them at first. No big deal. That happens. It's no big deal. It looks like she's got some other beautiful eggs. They're kind of not really together, so I'm going to take them out one by one. And I'll have to candle these. Whenever eggs are like this and loose like this, I always want to candle them just to make sure that the embryo side is up. We've talked about that a bunch of times. Regardless, it looks like she has two, four, five good eggs, a couple slugs. It's going to be a cool clutch. Again, the banana, the pinstripe, the fire, and the yellow belly incomplete dominance. So it could be all kinds of really cool combinations there up. So uh, let's candle these eggs and move on because we got one more clutch to pull. This next clutch is absolutely incredible. I love animals like this. This, of course, is a VPI Azanth female and she looks like she's wrapped around a beautiful clutch eggs hoo hoo doggy and she's actually het for lavender so we could have lavender snows and it's actually bred to a double head lavender snow so with any luck we'll get some lavender snows from this clutch again double recessives with the lavender recessive and the azanthic recessive let's see how many eggs she's got Come on, mama, let's see what you got underneath here. I can see one egg is like actually even loose. So I'm just gonna pull that aside because it's gonna kind of flop all over the place. Not sure if the other eggs are got, whoa, jeez, that's a good clutch of eggs right there. Whoo, doggy, I tell you what, that's a lot of perfect size eggs. I'm just gonna kind of pull these off as we go. These might be clumped together. This one, yeah, they all look like they're kind of clumped together. Just gotta pull them away from the paper and we'll get these in here. Whoo, I tell you what, mama, you did so good. All right, we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, <laughs> we keep getting tripped up on that 11 number. We can't get over the hump and get to 12 eggs, but hey, listen, I am super happy about that. 11 beautiful eggs from an azanthic female that is het for lavender bread to a double het lavender snow. Whew, tell it, these babies are gonna be amazing, but uh, that's all the clutches we have today when it comes to ball pythons. I have another clutch of children's pythons that are pretty much all hatched out right now. And of course, these are those little pygmy pythons from Australia that are so absolutely adorable. We had a Stimson's python clutch, we had a recent children's python clutch, but there's one animal in here that is a little bit different. When you look at this pile, you see some polymorphism, a little darker, a little lighter, but then there's this little monkey right here. And this monkey looks a little bit different right here. Now, in Australia, they have what they call T-positive children's pythons. And I'll be totally honest with you, I have a feeling that's what this is. I think it is. Now, is it really named the right way? I'm not 100% sure because T-positive would be Tyrosinase positive albino. Whereas, I'm not 100% sure I would call that an albino, but I will say that I've seen the T-positives from Australia, and I have a feeling we may have spontaneously just produced one because it is obviously very different than the rest of these animals. This is like what a normal light children's python would look like right here. This is obviously way different. The hues are different, and I can understand why they would call them T-positive because they've got that kind of purplish look to it. And that's a tyrosine that is a protein in melanin, the black pigment. Regardless, I'm excited that we had a beautiful clutch of children's pythons, but I'm even more excited that we had this little gem hatch out right there. So we'll have to see what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and see what the sex is of this one. We'll definitely hang on to this. I know what the female is. And if it's a boy, we can raise it up, breed it back, and see if it's actually something genetic or not. Be pretty interesting. Nevertheless, cool little project, and uh, let's just see what the deal is with this guy. And yes! It's a male. That is absolutely awesome. That's right. So I can raise this guy up, bring him back to mom, and see if it is a recessive mutation. That is pretty awesome. I'm excited about it. A couple years, we'll know the answer. I got some great news. So I had a little bit of an idea, but I didn't actually tell you guys. But a redney that we've been raising up to have a nice one that everyone can handle has actually molted today. And uh, he is, man, look at this. Look at this. Holy moly, he's huge. 
huge. Oh my God, look how huge he's already gotten. I don't want to mess with him too much. He's he just molted. But here in a few days, we'll do another update with you guys. Well, uh, and, I, and I'll actually see, maybe we actually might see some tibial hooks start to form on his pedipalps and things like that, and actually get a better indication if he's a male. I don't really think that that mold's gonna be really good enough to be able to actually check to see if I, if I can actually tell that way. So, uh, man, holy cow, do you see those colors? <laughs> and it's that time again, kids. <laughs> Colubra day time. I'm sorry, I just always have fun with that one. I know you people are like, that's the corniest stuff I've ever seen. This is a super cool animal right here. It's actually a caramel het for butter, which is het for albino. It's also het for stripe, and it's het for scaleless, and it's bred to this motley scaleless corn snake. That's a ripper, I tell you what. So there could be some really cool stuff. I mean, all kinds of different combos can come out of this. Let's hope there's some good eggs. Woo! -hoo. Yes, there is. And look at that caramel female. That is absolutely beautiful. I love it. And again, the albino caramels are what they call butter corn snakes. So, Mama, you did so good. We'll get you cleaned up. We'll get you some water and stuff like that. That is a beautiful clutch of eggs. It's good to see that even as we're getting to the end of the colubrid season, we're still getting good eggs. So that is really, really good to see. That means Lori's been staying diligent as well. So we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15, good eggs. I tell you what, that's beautiful way to start the egg collecting with colubrids. This clutch is actually an oka tea that is het for scaleless, and of course it's bred to an Abbott's oka tea scaleless that is crazy. Just take a look at how beautiful that snake is. I mean, I love the Abbott's oka tea scaleless stuff, so uh, hopefully, with any luck, we'll get some good eggs here and produce some beautiful Abbott's oka teas. Ah, uh, it's a mixed bag here. I'm not so sure. No, it's not even a mixed bag. That is 100% sluggers right there, so uh, not too good, which is interesting because that male has fathered several clutches and uh, they've all been good. So I have no idea. This could be a female issue. So what we do is we'll mark, of course, that she laid slugs. We'll try to rebreed her for a second clutch. And if she says slugs again, we might breed her one more time next year. And if she slugs out again, then we just sell her as a pet. You know, just get her out as a pet because we don't want anyone to breed her in the future. But nevertheless, that's a lot of slugs. I mean, that's, uh, that's, not, uh, that's not something good to see. But hey, like I mentioned, I'm going to show you the ups and downs of how it is to be a snake breeder. I'm super excited about that children's python just to see if it's something genetic. That would be really cool because there's not a lot of mutations when it comes to children's and spotted pythons around. So that would be really dope. Not to mention we have so many more egg cutting videos to come. I hope that you guys will enjoy that part of it. As a matter of fact, if you do, here's an entire playlist of egg cutting you can roll through. Can you also support my podcast channel? Right up here you can subscribe. It's called Checking In. On this side you can subscribe to this vlog channel. Turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.